Hi and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Steve Forbes and today we're speaking to Auckland mayoral candidate John Tamahiri about his campaign, 2019 campaign to win the Auckland mayoralty. So how's the campaign going John? Oh, I'm pretty chipper. Yeah, yeah it's actually um, momentum's building. You know, I've, got, I've got to say six weeks ago, uh, I've been out on the campaign trial since the 25th of January when we launched. Um, it was tough going but um, there's an excitement uh, building in the city and I, I think it's outstanding. Okay, so uh, what do you see as the most pressing issues facing Auckland moving forward and what do you plan to do as the Mayor? Oh look, the three, the three big issues um, are transport, transport and transport, but uh, there's also uh, housing affordability uh, and affordability in rental housing, Yeah. Um, and uh, that all uh, triggers off uh, a big problem we've got down the CBD with homelessness. And so if you can um, tag uh, those two biggies and uh, knock the third one off as a consequence, uh, in the first three is that that would be really good. Um, do, you, do you think though the affordable housing is really a role for the council? No, um, uh, on one part of it it is, I'll tell you why. Um, the most strategic land parcels, brown field, mm. uh, that are close to already inbuilt infrastructure and uh, transport, mm. uh, Panuku owns. Uh, what we haven't had with the Crown is a grown up conversation about uh, linking um, marginal strips of schools that are unused, MOE, M, uh, the um, DHBs. Uh, there's significant land uh, that is waiting for intensification and better use. Mm. And so, um, of course, that's the role of the city to make uh, land, su land supply is extraordinarily important mm. on the supply side. Uh, so that is essentially that, that role you're talking about as in fostering development like Panuku yeah. is is brief to do. I know you, you obviously don't think that you're carrying it. Oh no, look, um, no, on any measure Panuku has failed. Um, mm. In 10 years of a bull market, the return on investment on the most strategic land parcels and most expensive by square metre um, is appalling. Mm. It's just an appalling uh, um, management of ratepayer assets. Mm. And that's just the fact. You have a look at Kiwi Property Trust just as weighing uh, apples with apples. Okay, so since uh, announcing your run for office, you've uh, promised to sell the ports of Auckland, privatise 49% of water care, scrap the regional fuel tax, build a new harbour bridge, revise the city rail link, build a new tram train system spanning the city, scrap the government's light rail project, and freeze rates. Do you, did I miss anything? There? No, no, I think, you should, I think you should keep going. Oh, I've been a very busy man. So, I've uh, half so obviously you've made some <laughs> massive promises there. Do yeah. you really think you can realistically... No, no, they're not, they're not massive promises. Um, I've promised to rebuild the balance sheet of the city. Yeah. To do that will require multiple tools, like the release of 49% of the equity in water care to fix up our beaches now rather than 10 years, 20 years down the track. Um, wastewater, um, stormwater... Uh, is out of water care and is the purview of the rate payer mm. and that's why we're running into big problems mm. and so uh, we have to review the whole of the CCO structure yep. we have to drag uh, wastewater and stormwater back into water care's responsibilities rather than leave it as an outlier to the city there are multiple things that we have to do to rebuild our balance sheet um, every project that I have indicated are priority projects mm. for Auckland. They mm. are funded, but they're funded in a 10-year track mm. uh, through the ATAP fund, which is a $28 billion fund. 60% mm. uh, of that fund is not allocated. Mm. What I'm saying is I want central government to bring forward uh, the work programs uh, to finish our networks uh, and to ensure that the city um, is not in gridlock all the time. Mm. So. Uh, one of the other things you've proposed, which I mentioned there, was scrapping regional fuel tax. Now, yeah. I know to do that you'd require the support of council and central government under the legislation. So, I mean, do you think you could get the support of the council and central government to re to, re to revoke the well, um, regional fuel well, tax? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that question until the 13th of October. I'm seeking the mandate of Aucklanders uh, for this reason. Um, Aucklanders help rebuild Christchurch willingly. Uh, we've fixed Kaikoura willingly. We've repaired Wellington willingly. We've put $3 billion into the Provincial Growth Fund that Aucklanders can't get a hand near it. Uh, everywhere you look, um, Auckland has been penalised. The 11.5 per cent a litre uh, Gough petrol tax has been levied solely on the city and on its citizens because they're Aucklanders. Now, Aucklanders will cop a, a petrol tax of uh, that amount if every other city 
has it levied on them. If not, no, it has to go. Will I get the support of council for it? Uh, I'm getting the support of Aucklanders first, and then I go down town with the ruling uh, and governing body, and uh, they'd be very, very hard pressed to turn that back as a council. Once council approve that that negotiation is on, Chris Fletcher and I are on a plane to Wellington, and we'll sort a number of things out because Wellington has us in a headlock. Well, that was one of the things I was going to ask you about, was because obviously the, the, the one thing that you and Phil Goff do agree on, which there's obviously not a lot there, but that you agree on, but obviously one thing you do agree on is you, think, you feel that basically the government needs to do more to support Aucklanders. Or Aucklanders no, no, somewhere. he's just changed his mind in the last two debates on that. Uh, if you go back on debates before that, uh, he has capitulated and he has said that, well, really his stance is um, he, he hasn't broken away from wanting to be the cabinet minister for Auckland rather than the mayor. Uh, I want to be the mayor. And there is a difference between the two of us. Last night at the property council debate, he said uh, we can't get what we want because there's 65% of other New Zealanders. Well, that's immediately doing away with the fact that we drive 40% of GDP, we're 38% of the population. Uh, we're the only globally scalable city. We're, 50, we're, we're the whole population of the South Island plus 50%. Unless we use Aucklanders' leverage to fix a number of problems that we've got caused by central government planning, uh, we're in big difficulty. And um, I'm not, I, I wasn't chosen by the ruling council of the Labour Party to stand for mayor in Auckland. Uh, you know, I, I am an independent and I'm having to go with Christine Fletcher to change the whole narrative. So, so if you win the mayoralty, you're talking about basically using that leverage against a government, with the current Labour government, lead government, in election year. You're, you're planning to use that as, as Well, leverage. it goes like this. The orthodoxy that must be broken, that was implemented uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, Rogernomics and uh, euthanasia, uh, moved uh, all of infrastructure uh, costs to, set to local government from central government. Prior to that, uh, the Ministry of Works and a whole range of others used to do all the infrastructural works. Local government then looked after uh, the housing subdivisions, water, rubbish and the like. Um, that, that changed dramatically. Now, we're, we're actually um, mined the most out of that policy, uh, but it, it now no longer works, it's broken, and we Aucklanders uh, want our fair share of our taxes deployed now back in our city because we want to build out the city. We don't need Wellington determining the timeline and also the amount of money that we get back. So we have to have a grown-up conversation about changing uh, that broken orthodoxy. So one of the, or two of the projects actually you mentioned in roading was, or one of the roading projects you mentioned was the Penlink project yep. from uh, State Highway 1 to Whangaparaua. The other project you mentioned was uh, building a new harbour crossing or uh, rebuilding the superstructure of the harbour bridge. Now, both of those projects you said you could fund it out of the ATAP budget, yep. which is $28 billion over 10 years, which was announced by Phil Goff and Phil Twyford last year. <clears throat> Which projects would you scrap out of the existing ATAP budget to pay for those two projects? No, no, I've just told you that 60% um, of that budget's not allocated against mm. any project. I'm bringing forward the spending uh, in terms of infrastructural uh, um, build-out in Auckland a lot quicker, and I want the money coming from Wellington to be deployed within a tighter time frame than over 10 years. Mm. That's $2.8 billion a year. No, 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 we, we need um, projects now. Here's the other thing, the stimulation in the economy caused by that infrastructural investment in Auckland would be quite significant as well. Uh, the other issue that I wanted to touch on is um, completion times. Uh, we will make sure that those projects work 24-7 like they do in every other city, rather than on the Takanini to Manirua, and uh, if you're on the northwest from Lincoln Road to Massey, five years for a kilometre mm. per year. I mean, you know, in, it's a laughing stock around the world uh, that uh, we pay capex costs for the whole period, but OPEX only works six hours a day. That, that is a disgrace. It doesn't even work on the weekends. The congestion caused by that alone and the congestion caused by those two projects alone mm. are unacceptable. So there's a number of things that we have to do bring, to bring forward things, mm. uh, and it's all actually being planned, and it's all actually being funded. We're just driving it forward. Mm. Okay, so uh, what, what are you looking at? Are you got any upcoming announcements you've got in the... Yeah, well, look, um, well, there's only one bloke in the mural contest that's got any ideas by the look of it. <laughs> because, you know, old Goffy, he, he announces on the 4th of March, I'm running again and your rates are going up 10.5%. 
And then when he um, launches the campaign for the election, he says, oh, I'm going to start my electric car set to play around downtown with. Now, these are two stunning policies. I get that. But um, where are they taking us? So we need a mayor and a leader that actually says, no, here are our priority projects. This is where the funding is. This is how we're getting it. And I'm not taxing you. If, if I never drew a la line in the sand on freezing rates at, um, what, at from his level, um, which works out at 86, $86.6 .6 million a year. If I can't save less than 1% of cost without any impact on borrowing or anything else, uh, there's something wrong with the city. Do you think you can do that with the city growing at 30 to 40,000 people a year? Well, you don't know how many thousands of credit cards are downtown. Uh, one in four workers that walk into that building is on six figures. The, um, I'll give you a couple of other metrics. Uh, Auckland Transport, $248 million a year in salaries and wages, but $666 million in contractors and consultants. And you can't get any transparency on the $666 million. If you have a look at RT, the economic development site, $124 million in wages and salaries, $244 million in contractors and consultants, and RT doesn't build anything, doesn't do anything. So if you if you think that I can't find savings of 86.6 million dollars, less than a percent, for for a guy on a salary like you, because you don't pay well at interest.co, but uh, it would just be a, a flat white a week. That's all you need to save. All right. Thanks for your time, John. Yeah, good on. I'm Steve Forbes, and you've been listening to interest.co.nz.